Hello friends, Tofel Smokey back with our next Warframe guide. Today we're going back to talk about Profit Taker and specifically how to quickly and easily take her down so you can farm tons of credits, charisma toroids, debt bonds, and the occasional rare mod. We're a little late to talk about Profit Taker, but with the recent release of Hildren and double drops on the Valis for the Buried Deaths event, I'm sure some of you will be wanting to jump into Profit Taker farming for the first time. This guide will be from a solo perspective, but I want to start by saying that I definitely recommend at least two people to keep the fight moving efficiently. We'll be going over builds and weapons first, so if you already have your gear set up and just want to break down of the fight, feel free to skip to the time on screen now. First up to talk about our gear is my beautiful blue boy Chroma Prime. We're bringing an ice element on Chroma for additional armor and projectile deflection. And the build for the orb fight that I'm using uh, looks like this. It's pretty different from your standard Chroma Eidolon build. We drop some power strength for additional base armor with the Umbral mods, as maximum Vex armor damage is not needed in this fight. And the highest possible damage reduction will help you more when soloing. If you have a friend who can run Oberon, feel free to swap back to Umbral Intensify as the extra armor won't be needed with Oberon's healing and armor bonuses. Handspring is a great choice for this fight as well. Profit Taker knocks you down about as often as Nora Knight voice lines play in our missions right now. Please let us turn her off DE. So unless you have Prime Sure Footed, you will want to keep that on your build. Lastly, bring Arcane Nullifier to keep magnetic procs off of you and keep your energy topped off. For weapons, I'm bringing the new Opticore Vandal, a Ketchmoon kit gun, and the Redeemer Prime. If you aren't familiar with the mechanics of this fight, the Profit Taker's adaptive shield can only be damaged by one of 13 damage types at a time, making the elemental and physical damage types on our weapons very important to pay attention to going in. On this setup, I have Radiation, Cold, and Puncture on the Opticore Vandal, Corrosive, Heat, and Impact on my Ketchmoon, and Magnetic and Gas on the Redeemer Prime. The Redeemer also naturally does a bit of blast damage not listed on the stats, but it's way less than the elements that we've applied ourselves. A couple of things to note, as always with Chroma, you do not need flat damage mods on your weapons when using Vex Armor, as the Vex Armor damage bonus overrides any base damage increases from your mods, so skip on Serration, Hornet Strike, and Pressure Point, and opt for more elemental damage or some quality of life, like Fire Rate for the Catch Moon. I also highly recommend Pax Charge on your kit gun if you bring one for this fight, since it keeps you from ever having to worry about reloading your secondary, which can save some serious time in a pinch. With this setup, the only damage types I don't have are Viral, Electric, Toxin, and Slash, so if you want to copy my builds but aren't going solo and have a friend on Oberon, have him bring those elements along with maybe Blast on their weapons so you never have to cycle the Profit Taker's shield. Jumping to Operator Equipment, I recommend double healing arcanes on the kiddo, especially for solo. Magus Repair seems to be best in slot if you have it, but if not, Magus Elevate or Nourish work just fine. For an amp, you want to bring something with range for the prism, so the schwak is not recommended. In the footage you'll see for the fight, I'm using a 327, but I would probably recommend a 427 as it has a higher fire rate and less drop off than the 3. The last thing to go over before heading out is our arc gun. I'm bringing the Imperator Vandal with this build, but if you don't have the Vandal, I recommend either the Corvass or Velocitus. I have heard from friends that the new Larkspur works quite well too, but I haven't had a chance to fully format it out and test quite yet. A few of these mods drop directly from the Profit Taker, so if you don't have them and want to get the most out of your arc gun build before the fight, they can be transmuted from four rare mods. I highly recommend transmutation if you have extra gold mods in your inventory and want to finish out your art gun builds, people in my Twitch chat have seen Sabbat rounds, hollowed bullets, dual rounds, and even critical focus just from transmuting. I can't stress this enough, transmute your mods, kids. At the very least, you might make some platinum from it. Now with the builds and gear all shown off, let's jump out to the Valis and talk you through a profit taker run. So we'll go ahead and talk through an entire Profit Taker run here. We begin by accepting the bounty from Utico and left-clicking like crazy to skip all of the unnecessary cutscenes that we had to watch a million times during the first week that Profit Taker was out. 
load onto the Valis. And as soon as I come out, you're going to see I drop four health pads with a bit of a delay in between each. I like to do that so that I can get a nice bit of energy for the fight and then jump into my arc wing as they're going off and get a bit of energy for my Itzel as well. We'll spam teleport over to the orb and I can see that she's on cold. Uh, get your two and your three up. Um, shoot your first set of uh, damage types if you have it. If not, you're going to need to jump to cycle the damage type with your operator amp, which you'll see coming up here. Uh, now you can see the blast damage from the redeemer takes considerably longer than the gas or magnetic, but it's still not terrible. Again, if you do have a friend, you may want to have them run that element, since the redeemer's damage is, is not fantastic. Um, now you definitely want to keep the beacons destroyed. If you see any pop up here, uh, one of the only times things really get hairy is if the alert level gets too high, you start to get jackal spawns and spider spawns, and it gets just very chaotic in the middle of the fight. Um, I'm having some rough luck with the elements going in here. Uh, we've had to cycle a couple of times in a row with our amp, but we actually then get uh, a couple that we can do with our kit gun right in a row there. Uh, we'll switch to arc gun after the shield's depleted, get our buffs back up and refreshed, and you can see I get really low there. We pop out for a second or two to heal with Magus Repair, and finish off the legs and then the head. Now after this first damage phase, you'll want to keep your Art Gun out. Take a second to clear adds, especially if you see Art Gun wielders out there, uh, as you'll need that extra Art Gun ammo to replenish your stock and get your Art Gun back out sooner. Um, we're using Naramon Mind Step to quickly get between points, uh, these pylons that the Prophet Taker has shot out. Um, she'll do this in between each damage phase. You want to make sure you get in between the pylons as quickly as possible, take them out, and then you can continue on. Uh, once all four pylons are destroyed, check for any beacons, and then you have one more damage phase with your art gun on the legs, and then finally the head. So there goes the head, and another shield phase starts, starting on gas. Uh, now you'll see that Puncture is probably the single weakest part of our setup. It still only takes a few shots with the Opticore, but I do have to reload in the middle, which kind of adds some time. Um, the natural heat on the Catch Moon, however, <laughs> goes very quickly once I can get a shot or two off on it. Uh, and the radiation uh, for the Opticor, it does much better than the Puncture as well. Physical damage types in general, minus impact on the Catch Moon because it has so much impact. Uh, tend to go a little bit slower, unless you've got something that really specializes in that damage type. Get one more shot of cold off, and then we are good to bring our art gun back out once those shields are down. Take out this Fluctus wielding corpus, just to make sure we have some ammo on the ground for us to pick up. And smash the legs. Handspring gets us back up real quick there. A little bit of healing from Magus Repair, and after the second damage phase, you can go ahead and get your art gun uh, put away. You're not going to need it immediately again like you do after the first phase. you got some more pylons to destroy. Use Mind Sprint to get in between them quickly, and for this phase, the Redeemer actually basically one-shots every pylon. Since you, uh, you have your art gun put away, you're able to just quick melee, get those out of there. Um, I guess it's not quite quick melee anymore, um, but you are able to destroy those very quickly with the Redeemer Prime. And uh, you'll see me drop energy pads occasionally while I'm dashing between uh, the pylons. That's just to keep it going a little bit quicker. You definitely don't need to spam uh, energy pads or mind step or anything like that. You are able to just kind of void dash or just, uh, bullet jump between them, and it's going to have a pretty unnoticeable effect. It may increase your times a bit, but uh, you'll still be able to finish the fight. What is it? Uh, we're cycling damage types here. We had Viral and then Slash. Try to get a couple of shots of Slash off on the Opticore, because it does have some Slash damage, and you do have to wait a few seconds before you're able to recycle the shields. Corrosive and Impact, that's two in a row right from the Catch Moon again. And a few shots from the Opticore for Puncture. A little bit of heat, and then we get into our last damage phase. 
you do have to be careful, especially when recasting your two, as that's a, uh, uh, animation that cancels off any other animations. You know, it'll shoot, reload, anything while you do that. Uh, and that can often leave you kind of stuck in a situation where you can't use transference to get into your operator to heal. Uh, so after one more damage phase, we, uh, take the Prophet Taker down. We're gonna cast our Effigy with Chroma to double the credit drops that we pick up and just clear off any adds that may be attacking us. This is one of the most dangerous times in the fight uh, because you lose a significant amount of armor when you shed a, uh, your uh, armor with effigy. Um, but as you can see, the credits got dropped. The normal drop is 125,000. We got 250,000 for that. And uh, when we head back in, that's gonna get doubled from our credit booster and doubled again due to the drops on the Valus being doubled right now for the uh, Buried Debts event. So there we go dudes, we're a million credits richer and have a bunch of extra toroids and debt bonds all in just over 5 minutes. Just to recap each stage of the fight since it does move pretty quick, the order goes shield phase 1, where we damage her shields with the damage type displayed on her head, arc gun damage phase 1A, where we shoot her legs and then head with our arc gun. From there, leave your arc gun equipped until the next shield phase begins. Next is pylons phase 1, in which we jump or void dash to four different pylons shot out by the orb and destroy them. Then arc gun damage phase 1B, in which we need to do another set of damage on the legs and head with our arc gun still equipped from the last damage phase. Next is shield phase 2, a repeat of shield phase 1. Arc gun damage phase 2, another round of DPS into the legs and head. Pylon Phase 2, jump to each of 6 pylons this time and destroy them. Shield Phase 3, and Arc Gun Damage Phase 3. Then stand under the orb, cast Effigy, try not to die, and collect your loot. Shield, Damage, Pylon, Damage, Shield, Damage, Pylon, Shield, Damage. That's the whole fight. That's about all for this guide, guys. With some practice and the right gear, you can easily farm this boss in about 5 or 6 minutes, even solo, and much faster if you have at least an Oberon in the squad to save you time from having to heal in Operator so much. If you still need to get your hands on the Opticore Vandal to try out against Profit Taker, I have a link in the video description to my guide on how to close the Thermia Fractures in the Orb Valus right now and get this new weapon. We help viewers with Orb Fights, Nightwave, and just about everything else on on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash so if you'd like to join us or just check out the stream, we'd love to have you. I've also been working on a 50 starter platinum only challenge on my second account to see how far we can push into the late game content with the fewest resources possible, and we've been playing that account on stream quite a bit as well. I replayed the entire game on this account recently, so if any newer players are watching this video out of curiosity, we can help you out too. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll never ask for likes or subscribes on YouTube, but if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please consider stopping by my Twitch channel and saying hi. I've only been streaming for about a month so far, but the best part has been meeting new people to play Warframe and chat with. Maybe we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching dudes, we'll see you next time.